working on the LS swap for Francis. There's the block right there. Got pistons we're working on. He's putting the rings on there. I just got finished, as you saw in the video, cleaning up some parts. We're about to start putting this motor together and I'm super excited. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we bought was from Summit, Summit Racing. What we did is just took the whole mo motor apart and then refreshed the motor and then put some different heads on there. We've got a intake, exhaust, cam, just some mild upgrades to the factory motor. Here's one of the first pictures that I took of the LS whenever I dropped it off at Zach's shop. And you can see in the pictures, has a computer with it, all the wiring, all the things, transmission. So I bought that from a friend, took it over to Zach's and we started ripping it apart. One of the very first things that I did is reach out to Travis at AZ Pro Performance. I knew that he had a LS swap kit that included all the things that you're seeing in this picture right here. The LS swap kit from AZ Pro Performance is going to give you the radiator, the headers, transmission cross member, the dirty dingo engine mounts, the shallow oil pan, and all the gaskets that you're going to need to make the LS swap possible. Since this was my first swap, I'll, I just wanted to take all the guesswork out of it. That's why I went with the LS swap kit. And also on AZ Pro Performance, their website, you're going to see a check down box for the Boyd tank that's pictured here. Um, that Boyd tank is going to come with the in-tank fuel pump, which you'll need with the LS swap. And it's also going to give you a fuel filter regulator. That way you don't have to have a return line on your swap. And also it has the option to have a painless wiring harness for the LS swap. So everything just plugs in. It comes with a fuse box everything that you're gonna to need to have a standalone harness. We also purchased a list of items from Summit, as you can see here. We got the cylinder head bolts, the LS2 timing chain, LS oil pump, LS cam bearings, engine gasket set, camshaft, ring set, main bearing, valve springs, roller lifter, lifter tray, rod bearing set, all those different items. Cause if you're gonna refresh the engine like we did, tear it all down to bare block and build it up, Here's all the things that you're gonna need. Whenever I bought the engine, it came with a gas pedal, but it ended up being the wrong type of gas pedal. It was one of the larger mechanism gas pedals. So I bought just one of the basic truck gas pedals that'll bolt into the bracket that I'll show you later that makes it really easy to mount your gas pedal on your firewall. One of the things you have to do with the LS swap is once you do the swap, you have to get the VATS deleted from the ECU. Or you could do what I did from Summit. They have an ECU that already has those codes deleted from it. It's $200, comes with the box as you see here. And it is made so you can plug this directly into your wiring harness and the LS motor should just fire right up. That way you can get it to a tuner to do the rest of the work. I also bought some of these brackets that you see mounted to the side of the ECU and that is gonna mount to my firewall and that is going to just have it super clean on the inside that'll mount up and make the computer look really nice behind my glove box. So we're replacing the rings on the pistons right now. Here's the kind we're using, the ring leader. These are from Summit, it's a part number. I'm gonna have all the part numbers on a list here and in the description, just so everybody knows what we're using. This isn't gonna be your typical step-by-step -step rebuild. We're just gonna give you updates and let you be a part of this build, man. I'm excited about it. There's a stack of parts right here. We got the new heads right there. Here's the box from Summit that's got the cam and all the internal parts to refresh this engine. The painless wiring harness. We've got the headers, speed engineering headers, speed engineering cross member. This is all from AZ Pro Performance. I don't even know what this is. There's so many things. That's from Summit as well. I think that's the gasket kit. I've got a intake system for it to get away from the big bulky kind of intake that comes on these from the factory. That's it.
<laughs> know your torques. That's on the summit side. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Look at that. Hey, we got a quick tip from Zach the Pro here from RS Restorations. I don't know about the pro part, but <laughs> so one thing about these LS is there's a few places where they're prone to leak really bad. That's the back cover right here, which I always replace with, it includes the rear main seal. The other thing is, uh, which is really cool if you don't already know, a LS is a six bolt main. So there's four bolts here and then there's bolts on the sides like this. And these are prone to leak bad. So what I like to do is put a lot of Teflon on the threads and then a little bit on the flange of the bolt as well. So when you put it in the, in the side here, you'll have way less chance of a leak. Because what it does is it runs down, the oil in here will get splashed around and get in between these cracks and come right out this hole. So if you don't want a leaky, leaky LS, mm. do that. Yeah, we don't want a leak swap on Francis here. We want an LS swap. <laughs> Leak swap. Leak, leak swap. And that actually is L. Look at look at that, man. I don't even write this stuff. I just Do the acronym just. Man. So what'd you just do? Uh, just torque the heads, this head. I had this one torqued already. Um, got the bolt kit for this one, just got it torqued down and uh, now I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was tough trying to tighten these down on a stand. So yeah. uh, get you a friend. You need to anchor, <laughs> anchor them to the ground. Yeah, or anchor that to the ground. But Zach, you were saying something about the way these torque down, you can't take these out and put them back in. They're like one time use or something. Yeah, 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 good, good point. So the, um, on a small block like that one, the bolts, you can use them a few times. Um, these are called torque to, your, torque to yield bolts. If you've never heard of that, um, you probably have, some of you have, but uh, basically they get used one time. They, they get, you torque them to uh, a certain specification that's pretty light, maybe 22 foot pounds, and then you go by degrees. And on this particular engine, you go a first 90 degree and then another 90. So you're doing 180 pull, which is why we're, why it moves on the stand. Um, but once it does that, it stretches the bolt. So you can't use them again once you pull the head bolt. You always gotta get new head bolts with an LS. That's good to know. I did not know that. Um, like a lot of you that's watching this video now, uh, this is your first LS build, or maybe you're trying to tackle your very first one. Um, I've had a couple vehicles with the LS, but this is a learning experience and it's fun, um, but it's costly. One thing that I found out is you can spend a lot of money very quickly. So I was talking to somebody yesterday and they had mentioned, you know, people will say two, two grand or three grand, you can do an LS swap. And, and you might could with a junkyard motor if you had the pedal and all the things just to throw it in. But Zach and I stripped this motor all the way down um, replaced all the gaskets, um, got it honed, got new heads for it, springs, gaskets, the valley cover, all the things that you see. We put a cam in there. Yeah, I don't want to forget about that. We ordered all that through Summit. All the links and stuff are going to be in the description and also on the Beacon page on simplec10.co. You can check out all the list of items from the LS swap. I'm also going to be working on having this available on the website too, step by step, how we did the LS swap. So as you're watching these videos, there's going to be some stuff that you see that I did that maybe you're not into, or maybe like, hey, I don't need any fancy um, 
ignition coil covers or anything like that, valve covers, or I don't need the Holly front um, setup or anything like that. But if whatever you're trying to do, just go into it with the plan. Kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do with this motor and went from there. Here's some of the other things. So we had to replace this front cover because the seal was busted. We've got a rear cover as well. Spark plugs. Simple upgrade for the rear of the motor is this aluminum oil plug from a factory. Those are plastic. This is a throttle body bypass. So that's for your coolant line that'll connect from one side of the motor to the other side. We'll show you that later. We've got some of these valve covers that our ignition coils bolt to, and then it hides all the wires and everything. And then the spark plug wires go out of there. Give it a nice clean look. Hey, what? does this go right here? Does this happen right here? That looked good to me. Man! I like that. That's a dominator. <laughs> <laughs> um, painless wiring harness for the LS and I also got the, the ECU from Summit that has the VATS deleted so as soon as we get this wiring harness plugged into the motor we can plug in that ECU and it will start we hope start right up and that is made so you can drive it straight to the tuner and not have to delete the VATS and all that kind of stuff before you can even start it went ahead and bought this painless power braid as well. That's gonna help us make all this wiring look really nice. It comes with all the wire loom, the rubber seals, all the zip ties, all that kind of stuff. So that'll help us out. Got some more hardware. And right here, and I'll tell you more about this later when we install the gas pedal from Liquid Creations. We have this LS gas pedal that mounts up to your factory holes in your firewall and then mounts the LS pedal on it so you don't have to fabricate that. Got this from eBay, link in the description. This looks really great. Should save some time trying to figure out the gas pedal situation. on your front cover, rear cover, and oil pan on an LS. So two points. One, this LS, this uh, front cover can move just a little bit. There's no dowel pins like on a small block. So you wanna make sure that this is flush right here and then torque your bolts down. The other big point is that when you're installing these gaskets, this will have a back cover on as well, which you can, you can put this on first, then the front cover, the back cover, whatever you wanna do. Um, but the other thing is, Make sure you put RTV in these corners right here, or this sucker will leak all over the place. But that's it. And do it on both sides. Just make sure you put um, RTV sealer on four corners of these things, and you'll be good to go. Next.
the LS taped off. We're gonna use some of this Pour 15 Chevrolet Orange. This is the high temp engine paint. Temperature is up to 300 degrees, matches the factory colors, will not burn off, professional use. This had a lot of great reviews to it. So I've got the link to this in the description. It's also on the website. We'll check it out. Wow.